So, uh, this week, uh, there was a lecture, we had a lecture on Joyce where um, I sort of relayed a lot of information, most of which comes from Joseph Campbell's uh, research and, and study of James Joyce's work. And I have a book called, um, I have the book that Joseph Campbell wrote on Joyce. If you'd like to borrow it sometime if you're interested. Uh, he's also online all over the place and he's even on Spotify. The lectures on Joyce even are on Spotify and you can listen to that pretty easily and they're very entertaining. <clears throat> but let's begin. So uh, at first we talked about uh, Dante Alighieri, the Italian poet whom Joyce uh, re revered enough to sort of model his own writing career uh, after. Uh, if you look at some of the major works by Dante, we begin with the Vita Nuova, uh, and then we get the Divine Comedy, which is the Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. Joyce similarly uh, wrote his own uh, collection of work uh, parallel. Portrait of the Artist is his Vita Nuova, Ulysses his Inferno, Finnegan's Wake his Purgatorio, and uh, he had plans of writing a Paradiso work which was supposed to have been his clearest and most decipherable uh, prose yet, but he regrettably died before he was able to. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's important to know about Dante is that he comes from a tradition of courtly love, uh, like a troubadour tradition, that um, is significant uh, when, we, when we talk about what kind of art it is. The Vita Nova, which begins the whole journey that Dante goes on in his Inferno, Parad Purgatorio, and Paradiso, uh, the central action of it is that he encounters Beatrice. Um, and when he sees Beatrice, his whole worldview changes. She becomes the center of, uh, of his world. Um, <clears throat> and then she dies and creates sort of this void. And he decides to uh, write a work about her which has never been written of a woman. And that's what he commits himself. He's, he's got to prepare himself to write such a thing, and then he comes out with the Divine Comedy. <clears throat> what kind of love does he have for Beatrice? All right, what is this? In order to properly understand the amour or the courtly love that's being uh, used in this instance, we distinguish it from three, from two other types of love: eros, which is simply lust, desire. Uh, Joseph Campbell calls it the zeal of the organs for one another. Uh, agape is a sort of a Christian brotherly love where we uh, re take care of the poor, we take care of each other, community building. <clears throat> and then Amour is, according to Gerard de Bournay, uh, another poet, uh, old, old poet, medieval I want to say, don't quote me, it says, the eyes recommend an image to the heart. Uh, they are the scouts of the heart. Um, this is where the concept of love at first sight comes from. Uh, perhaps the uh, most relevant example to our class especially is Romeo and Juliet where you have uh, two lovers whose families are, are do not get along um, their marriages are otherwise arranged and uh, they nonetheless defy social convention and seek out with their eyes a lover for themselves and uh, they, they see each other masks and everything they still they fall in love at this um, party <clears throat> at the Capulet house and um, and this is uh, uh, this is sort of the the beautiful romantic ideal okay and um, again Petrarch who uh, sort of pioneered the sonnet in Italy that was revised by English poets in the Elizabethan age similarly had uh, a a Beatrice uh, Laura and um, Beatrice rarely uh, reciprocated the emotions of Petrarch uh, if I'm correct and again, Beatrice is dead, so we sort of have these divine uh, images uh, that are muse-like for the artist, uh, and they have to, um, they commit themselves to creating an artistic masterpiece that will woo and do honor to um, this, this romantic other. <clears throat> Stephen has a theory of art, and we're skipping ahead just a little bit. Um, he says there's three types of art. Uh, essentially, there's pornographic art, which excites desire in the audience. These are anything from you know, actual you know, pornography as we know it to Arby's commercials or uh, superhero movies. You know, anything that gets me, wants me to go, I want to go eat a, a sandwich now, or I want to go um, buy a superhero toy or something. You know, this is uh, all pornography, according to Stephen Dedalus, uh, at, when he develops his own artistic theory at the end of the book. 
There's also didactic art that tries to correct what, uh, moral issues or so social wrongs, sort of a, um, <clears throat> they have an agenda. Um, even things as uh, benign as parables to things as, um, uh, you know, not benign, I guess, as propaganda uh, are didactic art. They're trying to correct behavior in the audience and, and tell you to do something or to change you. All right, think of it as one hand. We got desire on this end and then fear of <clears throat> being a bad person or going to hell on this other end. And these are two push-pull opposing forces and to bank on one side or the other is, is bad art. It, it compromises the artistic project according to Stephen Dedalus. For Stephen Dedalus, good art is, in the words of Joseph Campbell, something that causes an aesthetic arrest. It stills us. It creates a sense of awe that, um, <clears throat> that in Dante's, for Dante would be an eternal moment, seeing Beatrice, all right? Things make sense, all right? Seeing Romeo and Juliet, they see each other, they're committed, that's their center, that centers their whole life from then on, all right? It, this is the epiphany, this is the encounter with the sublime that Joyce <clears throat> is trying to recreate in Portrait of the Artist as a young man.